I want to show you guys how to assign oxidation numbers quickly, easily, and with no fuss. What I need you to remember is that an oxidation number is basically the charge on an atom in a compound, even though that's not strictly true. It's a charge that we assign. See, we assign a number to every atom to figure out whether or not it has more or less electrons than it did when it started. You need to be able to assign these numbers so that you can figure out whether or not things were oxidized or reduced. If you took a look at my reduction and oxidation video, you'll remember that we assigned these charges to some of the atoms. Where did those charges come from? Well, in that video, I made them up. But here, I'm going to show you how we actually do them. Step one, if it's a pure element, just the element itself, it's got an oxidation number of zero, metallic iron, gaseous xenon, hydrogen, liquid iron, still an element, solid nitrogen, still just the element nitrogen, sulfur, that's S8, in case you didn't know, that's just an element. That has an oxidation number of zero. Phosphorus, P4, oxidation number of zero. It's an element. Piece of cake. Step two, hydrogen's always plus one, except in something called hydrides. In hydrides, they're minus one. Here's what I mean. Oh, there's hydrogen in water. The oxidation number of the hydrogen is plus one. Oh, here's a hydrogen, plus one. Oh, here's two hydrogens. This one's plus one, this one's plus one. Here are six hydrogens. Each one of them is plus one. Here's 12 hydrogens. They're all plus one. Here's where it's different when you have a hydrogen connected to a metal atom. This is lithium hydride because the hydrogen itself has a charge of minus one. And here, when it's connected to the metal aluminum, minus one. These are really, really, really rare. My guess is you're not gonna see them in the questions that you do. Just something to keep in mind. I'm obliged to tell you about that exception. Rule three, oxygen's always minus two, except in peroxides where it's minus one. Here's what I mean. Here's a water molecule. Oh, there's an oxygen. I bet it's minus two. Oh, here's two oxygens. I bet each of them are minus two. Oh, here's six oxygens. I bet they're all minus two. The only exception you're probably ever going to see, and I can even promise that you'll even see it, is H2O2. This is hydrogen peroxide, and in this case, the oxygens get a charge of minus one. There are other peroxides that exist in the world, but you're probably only ever gonna see this. Those are the last steps two and three. The last step, step four, is that other atoms get the charge that they prefer, you know, valence-wise. Just make sure that the sum of all the atoms' oxidation numbers is the total charge in the particle. Here's, here's something that, uh, you know, practice. All right, step one, elements are zero. Now this is a compound, so it doesn't apply. Hydrogen's always plus one, uh, no hydrogen. Oxygen's always minus two. Oh, here's some oxygens. Each of these oxygens has a charge or oxidation number of minus two. Step four, other atoms get the charge they prefer. Just make sure the sum of the oxidation numbers is the total charge. Well, the total charge on this is zero. So all these oxidation numbers better add up to zero. I've got three oxygens, each contributing minus two. So in total, O is contributing minus six to the total oxidation number. 
I've got two irons, and those two irons have to cancel out this minus six. I hope it's obvious they're each plus three, because two plus threes would mean a total of plus six, and in total, when you add up all the oxidation numbers, you get the total charge of zero. Check. Irons get a charge of plus three in this case, oxygen's minus two. Nice. Let's do this more practice, even faster. Let's do it. Step one, elements are always zero, not applicable. Hydrogen's always plus one, not applicable. Oxygen's always minus two. Ooh, okay. Oxygen's minus two here. This isn't a peroxide. The only peroxide you'll ever see, remember, is probably H2O2. It's not. So, what I've got here are my oxygens contributing a total charge of minus six. I want a total charge of minus one. See there's a little minus there? So what charge does my Cl need to go from minus six to minus one? Hopefully, it's obvious that it wants a charge of plus five. Now, notice plus five is not chlorine's first choice of charge to have. It's a charge that it's allowed to have, and if you look up at, at a periodic table that shows the different valences each of the atoms can have, you'll see that there's a little plus five under the CL. But in this case, well, the oxygen rule took precedence. The oxidation numbers have to add up to minus one. And there's three of these minus twos hanging out. It's got to be plus five. I don't give a crap. All right. No elements. Mm, so nothing has an oxidation number of zero here. Step two, hydrogen's always plus one. Oh, okay. Those hydrogens must be plus one. Oxygen's always minus two. So each of these must be minus two. Now, we have to assign oxidation numbers, preferably whatever charge these atoms prefer, so that the total charge on the molecule is zero. Well, let's just keep track of what's going on here. We've got a sodium. We don't know what its charge is. We've got hydrogen atoms, and we don't know, oh wait, we do know they're contributing a total of plus two. We've got a phosphorus. We don't know what it's contributing. We've got oxygens. Four of them contributing minus two each. It's a total charge of minus eight. Whew. That all has to add up to a charge of zero. If you take a look at the periodic table, Na is in the first column. You know what kind of charges things in the first column can have? Plus one. And to be honest, that's about it. So Na is not very flexible here. It's probably going to be plus one. Atoms in the first column are almost always plus one, by the way. What charge does phosphorus want in order for the charges to add up to zero? Well, I got one and two and minus eight. That totals minus five. So this has to be plus five to cancel that out. If we take a look on a periodic table that shows valences, you'll see phosphorus can have a charge of plus five. Not its first choice, but it would certainly rather have a charge of plus five than sodium would rather have a charge of anything but plus one. because so that's basically the only charge it ever has. And that's how you assign oxidation numbers. Don't forget the rules. Step one, elements are always zero. Step two, hydrogen is always plus one. Step three, oxygen is always minus two. Step four, fill in the rest just make sure the total adds up to the total charge on the ion or molecule. Boom. Nice.